I'm Mima Dixie. Um, this is my mom, and I'm the elder of the family. <laughs> I'm Aunt Sandy, and I'm the next to the oldest. Well, I guess I'm just granny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have two sons, Jeremy and Nathan, and I have five grandkids. Chloe, Lexi, Carly, Andrew, and Will. I learned to cook standing in a chair at eight years old. Hog jaws, black eyed peas, and fried cabbage is supposed to be for wealth, for money, health, and for good luck. And you guys know what? We ain't never had any of it. So we just eat it because we like it. <laughs> year it's preacher and vegan mm -hmm. huh? and they love to eat i'm headed to the smokehouse to get some hot dogs down so we can have hot dogs tomorrow and i've got some jars to put in so i'll house to get our hog jaws that we have hanging. This is our little smoke house. This is where we hang our meat. The only thing that's left now is the hog jaws. We've already gotten, if I can open the door, we've already gotten the hams and the middlings down. And this is our hog jaws hanging. And I will take them down this week. And I will show you how to cook them. Also, I have all my cannon jars in here that's extra. Tastes like you just got them off the villain. See? It's cured. And that's cured hog jaws. And I was going to get my slicer out and slice them, but I believe that uh, it'd be just as fast to do them like this as it is to get the grinder out. If you haven't ever ate hog jaws, it's actually the sweetest part of the meat on the hog. You can see these is really cured out really good. Whenever we uh, sugar cure them, we take a dish pan and fill it with salt and brown sugar and pepper. And you don't really want to put hot pepper on it, red pepper. I know years ago, my grandpa and them, they would put red pepper on them. But actually what it does, it causes bugs to get on it for some reason. So we don't put red pepper on ours, we just put black pepper. And you would think steak and all that would be my husband's favorite meal. But guess what? It's hog jaws and black eyed peas and fried cabbage. <laughs> so there we go, guys. And tomorrow... We will fry these babies up and let you have a bite. Got my beans out of the freezer. 
And I'm washing them and cleaning them and we'll be putting them in a crock pot and I'm going to cook them all night so we can have them with our hog jaws and cabbage tomorrow. These are beans that I grew in my garden last year. I freeze green bean, soup beans and I also can soup beans. And these are the ones that I have froze. So we will be eating those tomorrow. Got my beans in my crock pot and I put some Oh, maybe a tablespoon of salt, a little bit of pepper, a pinch of sugar, and some fat back in them with some water. And I will cook them in the crock pot all night, and they'll be ready in the morning. What I'm doing is chopping up my cabbage. And I always put a little bit of salt and maybe a fourth of a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of uh, pepper in it. And I mix it up as I chop and that way the flavor actually gets into the vegetable when it's cooking. Put it over into my pot and we'll start cooking it while we work on our hot jars. Always put a little piece of fat back. And my hands are clean, I just washed, so. But your favorite gift God gave you is your hands. And I will turn it up and let them come to a boil. And I'll let that start cooking. Well, I don't like for mine to cook to death, and I knew we were kind of short on time, so. I only cook it maybe oh, just till it gets really good and tender because I don't like mine. Some people like it mushy cooked, but I don't like my vegetables cooked to death. Because I soak my hog dolls in buttermilk. And then, and I just put maybe a half a cup, whatever. I'll turn my electric skillet on. This one's not supposed to stick, but I always use a little bit of a pan. And even though hog jaws are fat, I always add oil because when you're country, you eat fat. And I'll show you a trick to tell you when your skillet is ready to Put your hog jaws in. So what you do, you just take your hog jaws and you dip them in your buttermilk. And I make up a batter, it's about a cup and a half of cornmeal, a tablespoon of flour, and about a big tablespoon of brown sugar. So to check to see if your skillet's ready, I always use a wooden spoon or a wooden, anything wooden. But you'll see bubbles start coming around the bottom of your skillet when your oil's ready. Because if you put it in oil that's not ready, your meat will soak up all the oil and it'll be just greasy taste. You won't have the, the crisp part of it. See how it's starting to sizzle around? That's telling me my oil's getting hot enough to go ahead and start. So, I'll drop my hog jaws in. Around here, especially nowadays, as high as groceries are, and it's so hard to find, I don't buy anything unless I want a fresh vegetable at the grocery store, but I only go to the grocery store once a month because we raise everything we eat. I tell the kids, if you don't grub it, hunt it, kill it and shoot it and clean it, you don't get to eat it around here because we eat deer, we raise our pork, we catch our own fish. The only thing we do buy is beef. We used to raise a beef, but we don't have, we haven't been lately.
we grind all of our meat. When we uh, kill hogs, we make our own sausage. We grind it. We season it. Everything we do, we don't take to a processed place. We process it ourselves. Simmer those for just a few minutes. So you'd never eat hog jaw. Okay. That looks really good. <laughs> hey, Forrest here. And I want to point out a few things here on this plate. First of all, the cornbread is perfect. And you see how it stays together? And I know it's delicious. I'm about to taste it. The crispy hog jaw, the tender cabbage, and the tender beans. It smells delicious. Looks great. We're going to try it right here. And you got black eyed peas that you didn't know you had. Oh, I saw them. Like I see too. We're gonna eat them. Do you put black peas in it? No, I made some. Oh. I'm so glad I can't even talk yet. <laughs> That's my favorite. Very tasty, very crispy, delicious, salty. Black eyed peas. Hmm. Delicious. <laughs> Normally, when I eat, I don't talk, so this is hard to do. Normally, I would take about two minutes and this plate would be gone. <laughs> Very tender soup beans. They're delicious. And these were canned or... Those were out of the freezer, but freezer I did beans, can them yeah. too. So. Very good. The tender cabbage. Mmm. That might be my favorite. Sweet. A little sugar in there, very tender. This is a great meal. Let me try some cornbread here. Got to soak up a little bean juice. Mm. This is perfect cornbread because it's very soft and moist in the middle. It's not dry and it's got the nice crispy edges. And that's hard to do. Only an experienced cook from Appalachia could get that done. And we can't forget the hot pepper relish. And most of the time when I eat anything, I want to put hot sauce or hot peppers on it. And so this just really adds to it for me. I'm gonna get a bunch of peppers so I can get a good taste. That's really delicious. And it's because it's been pickled and things, it's spicy, but it's not too much. It's really tasty.